Sewing machines become our friends, and we take care of our friends with good maintenance. Maintenance is such an important part to any mechanical machine that you wouldn't fly on airplanes if they were only serviced when they were broken. There are some common issues that you can address that will reduce the amount of service necessary on your sewing machine. They can be as simple as watching out for storage so that you don't have salt air causing corrosion. It only takes a little bit of corrosion to damage a, a bearing. Five microns of lint is enough to cause bearing damage and a human hair is 60 microns so that's a really tiny particle of lint. The uh, replacement of a broken part is a lot more expensive than the maintenance of it. A good place to start is concentrate on the basics. Having the right needles and thread, doing the proper cleaning, using bobbins that are appropriate for the fabric. It's important that you use the correct needle. If you don't have the right needle and it needs to be a good sharp needle installed properly, you're not going to sew as well regardless of your sewing machine. When you uh, are looking at thread, you have to make sure that you're using the right weight thread which can be a little complicated because of the weight systems. One of the simple ways is if you can slide the needle down the thread, then your thread will probably work in that sewing machine. Thread in the wrong spot can cause a lot of grief. It can cause it to heat up and even um, break components. Another problem is in the bobbin and hook area. They often need cleaning because all the lint caused by sewing. You have to decide if you're gonna clean it out with a brush or blow it out or vacuum with lint. One of the things that I caution people about is using canned air. It's not air and blowing the lint can hide a lot of it. You're a whole lot better if you can suck that out with a vacuum instead of blowing a lot of that lint back in there where those gears and motors are critical to the operation of it. This is a common problem that we see where a spool of your, from your stash gets caught. And then we also have lots of uh, parts that need polishing. You can see these uh, needle plates and bobbin cases need polishing. Kind of hard to see the burrs on these uh, pressure feet, but there is one of these that is bad. Here's a close-up shot and you can see that burr, how it would snag the fabric and shred the thread. And it wasn't easy to perceive it. You could feel it. Even centered bearings need re-lubrication and cleaning to make them work properly. But polishing those parts that are susceptible to getting burrs makes a big difference. You have to have the correct bobbin for the machine you're using. Bobbin sensors won't work or magnetic bobbins won't work if it has a magnetic hook support. And you have to use the right equipment for the fabric and that means the right needles, the right thread, the right stitch, the right foot. Uh, many problems can be resolved by that. When you take a machine in for service, there's a lot of things that need to be done. There's a, a lot of mechanical inspections that we go through with every service, and they're pretty extensive. Um, it's more than just timing and, and tension adjustments. Uh, all of those things have to work together for it to work properly. Technology builds on prior technology, and as uh, machines have gotten more complicated over the years, uh, there's more and more adjustments that need to be done to make them work properly. When you find the uh, mechanical machines, they can actually have more parts than some of the new computerized machines. And that can require more adjustments than you would actually have on a computerized machine. But when you do have your machines with computers built in them, uh, you still have to do a lot of the things that we already discussed in the previous slides. But in addition to that, you have to have some special skills and tools to calibrate them. Even to get into the machine, there's uh, service codes that you have to know that are proprietary to different uh, manufacturers. So you really need to take it to the expert that uh, works on those on a daily basis. Now, of course, your cleaning, you can do a lot of that yourself. Uh, All-purpose cleaning and oil and alcohol are all good cleaners. Polishing, you can use 320 grit emery cloth or maybe a rubber buffing wheel on a Dremel tool. Uh, but at some point you might want to consider when should you replace the machine. The rule of thumb is if it's over 60% of the cost of a new one, maybe you should look at a new one. Of course, we love quality tools. The more durable they are, the seems to be the easier they are to work on and the longer they last. But some of the new technology is fantastic where you have a 
truly automatic tensions and sewing advisors and information display screens, which all make your quilting and sewing more precise and uh, easier to do. Um, some of them have uh, uh, automatic pivot functions. Uh, they might even have a embroidery unit that will allow you to sign your quilt or a longer throat space to make it easier to do larger quilts. Regardless of all this, our sewing machines become our friends, and it's okay to have more than one friend. Thank you.